Today's story is called Alice in Wonderland. Alice was a little girl <coughs> who lived in the countryside with her mother and father and her big sister. One day, she was out in the fields next to a little copse, a copse is a small wood, sitting under a tree and reading a book. Alice felt very tired. In fact, she felt more and more tired and she started to feel her eyes closing. But suddenly, and unexpectedly, she saw a white rabbit. Now, when you're in the countryside, there's nothing particularly unusual about a rabbit and not even a white rabbit. They're very common. But this rabbit was rather unusual because he was wearing a waistcoat and was carrying a watch. And she looked and she saw that the mouse was look not the mouse, the rabbit was looking at his watch and looking rather worried. Why? Oh. Now, you've just fallen off your chair backwards. Luckily it was a very small chair and it didn't hurt. Come and sit down. I didn't hurt myself. Yes. Because Maybe it's like Alice falling asleep. Yes, it's, it's like it's like I falling down the rabbit hole. A bit like that. Let's get this seated and I'll tell you the rest of the story. Anyway, so Alice, having seen this white rabbit wearing a waistcoat and looking at his watch, she decided to go and see it. But the rabbit dashed off as if he was in a big hurry. So Alice chased after the rabbit. Yeah, but he, but he found, he, but the rabbit, the rabbit went down the rabbit hole and landed at the bottom. But Alice fell down the rabbit hole on its own. Well, that's what happened. The rabbit dived down a rabbit hole. Well, Alice went over to the rabbit hole and looked inside. She put her head down the rabbit hole to have a look. She couldn't see the rabbit. And then he went, oh, he went down to the rabbit hole. But what she could see was the rabbit hole was very deep. Suddenly, the ground underneath her gave way and she tumbled into the rabbit hole. And down, down, and down, and down, and down, and down she went, falling, 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 falling. She was quite frightened, but she wasn't falling very fast. And as she fell, all sorts of things seemed to be falling too, like a piano, bookshelves, lamps. Suddenly, she landed at the bottom of the rabbit hole on a bed with a big bump didn't hurt her because the bed was extremely soft. And then she started falling again and down, down, down she went, tumbling. And finally, she landed on a pile of dry leaves and sticks at the bottom. She stood up and looked around. And you can see that. She, she was in a room. I can see lots of dogs. And there's a key on the table. And as she looked around, she noticed that there were a lot of doors. And, and, there's, a, and there's also a table. And on the table, there's a, there's a bottle called Drink Me. Exactly right. She looked around the room and there were lots of doors of varying sizes, from very big doors to middle-sized doors to very tiny doors. She started by trying the biggest door, but it was locked. And she tried all the doors. Then she tried the middle-sized door, and it was locked. And then she tried the smallest door, and it was locked too. So then she noticed the table, the glass table in the middle of the room, with a key on it. So she went to get the key. It was a very small key. First she tried the key in the large stores, but it didn't work. Oh, that's it, because he was little. He forgot to, he forgot to take the key. Well, first we're going to tell you what happened. Then she tried the key in the middle-sized doors, and it wouldn't fit the middle-sized doors. And last she tried the key in the very, very tiny door, and it opened it. So Alice put her head down to try and get through it, but she couldn't even get her head through because she was too big. The door was really only big enough to let a rabbit through. Yes. So she wondered how she could get through the door because when she opened the door and looked through it, she could see the white rabbit scurrying around. 
I must follow that rabbit, she thought. But And then she noticed that on the table there was a little bottle. And she looked at it at the label on the bottle, and the label said, Drink me. Well, she said, After all, this is a dream. You never know what might happen. So she put the key down on the table and she started to drink from the bottle. But, oh no, as she drank, she got smaller and smaller and smaller until she was just the size of a rabbit in terms of how tall she was, maybe a bit bigger. And she realized she'd be able to get through the door, which was where the rabbit had gone. So she went over to the door and tried the handle, but it was still locked. So she thought, well, that's not a problem, I'll get the key. So she went back to the table, but then she realized she was so small, she couldn't reach up to the table. The key was on top of the glass table. Oh no, she thought, what could I do? Then, under the table, in a little box, with the word, on the word, on the word, some words written in the box, and the words were, eat me. So she thought, whatever. So she opened the box, and inside was some cake. And any side, it was one, and it was one bit of the cake, and it became bigger, and bigger, bigger. Anyway, so she ate a piece of the cake. And it was bigger, 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 bigger. Finally, he was was missing down, but then he was just a tall. She became so big. Then then he came with his guy, but then he couldn't go go for the wedding. Exactly, she became so big, she bumped her head on the ceiling and she had to crouch down to fit in the room. Well, now she could reach the key, but she couldn't go through the hole, yes. uh, through the door. But he, but he found a little, uh, but then he took the key, and then he drank a bottle to drink me, but then he went down, down and he, could, he, he turned the key, and then he went past the key. Well, luckily she hadn't finished the bottle, which was called Drink Me, so she drank a little bit of the liquid, and by eating little, drinking little bits of liquid and eating a little bit of cake at the right time, she managed to get herself back to just the right size to go through the little door. But this time, as she shrank, she remembered to take the key off the table, and then she went over to the door with the key and opened the door and went through it. And then she saw the white rabbit scurrying away. So she ran after the white rabbit. But pretty soon he disappeared. Then she came across a blue caterpillar uh, sitting on a branch, smoking a hookah. A hookah? Well, it's like a strange pipe which goes round and it blows letters. Well, he blows letters with his smoke. He, he sucks it in and blows letter A, which makes A, or B, which makes B, or C, which makes K. And he says to Alice, are you a clever girl? And Alice says, I think I'm quite clever. This? So he blows the letter P and asks Alice, can you think of a word beginning with P? Uh. Can you think of a word beginning with P? Yes, Peter. That's right. She got it right. She said pipe, because he was smoking up a special pipe called a hookah. Pipe was a good word too, but Peter would have been the right answer too. Anyway, then she met Tweedledee and Tweedledum, who were both very, very fat. And um, he was the and the wearing white and black t-shirts. And they were wearing striped t-shirts. 
One's t-shirt was black with white stripes, and the other one's t-shirt was white with black stripes. But the trouble was, the stripes were all the same size, so you couldn't tell which one was Tweedle and which one was Dumb. No, Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Yeah, we couldn't tell which one was Tweedledee or which one was Tweedledum, because black, black with white stripes and white with black stripes look the same. Then she came across a table in the clearing in the forest. And at the table was seated a mad hatter, that's a man who makes hats, and a dormouse, and who else? My dormouse was, my dormouse was, but that dormouse has, that has a sword, a sword. The dormouse had a sword, and who else was at the table? And the, well, the rabbit, of course. Yes, the the, mar- the rabbit, the mar- I don't know if we call him the March Hare, but I suppose he was the March Hare. And he had his waistcoat on and his watch. Well, Alice saw there was a spare place at the table, so she sat down. But immediately the mad, mad hatter got very cross and said, No, 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 there's no place at the table. You can't drink tea here. But she said, But there was a place just for me. Anyway, the Mad Hatter started throwing things, then the Dormouse started throwing things, then he took a big hammer and broke the rabbit's watch. The rabbit was very cross. Oh my goodness me, oh my goodness me, I'm going to be late, I'm going to be late, said the rabbit. Well, Alice had never seen such a thing in her life. Then the Mad Hatter, he got up and walked along the table, knocking over the cups of tea and the teapots. Goodness me, who ever heard of someone walking on a table while we're eating? She thought. So she went away. It's bad. It's the time of a cup and she comes back and the table gets lost in on it. Anyway, the next thing she met was the Queen of Hearts and her army of playing cards. But this, do the cat, do, do the cat. The catcher, the catcher, with the, the catcher, the way bad, the the way the can the the cat, the 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 bass, the bass, the snacker, and the bass snacker. Oh, you mean the bundle snatch? Yes, the bass snatch wants to catch them. Oh yes, well, we're going to get to that bit. Um, so, as she walked through the forest, along came a very fierce bandersnatch. And, and, at the drum, at and the bandersnatch was chasing Tweedledee and Tweedledum and the March Hare and Alice and anything it could chase. And it had big, sharp, gnashing teeth. So Alice ran away. Robots. Well, there were lots of robots there. Robots? You mean uh, playing cards? Um, robots. Robots? Mm. In, I don't think they had robots in um, the story of uh, Alice in Wonderland. I don't remember that, but maybe you're right. Well, now. The, she ran away quickly and she came across the Cheshire Cat. Uh, now, you know the cat's got a big smile and it's a disappearing cat. And the cat gave her a word of warning. In fact, he said a little poem to her. Shall I read you the poem? It's, about, it's called Jabberwocky and it goes like this. Twas brillig and the slithy toves did Gaia and Gimble in the wabe. All mimsy were the borrow groves, and the moam wraths outgrabe. Beware the jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jump jump bird, and shun the frumious bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand. Long time the manxome foe he sought. 
So rested he by the tum-tum tree and stood a while in thought. And as in uffish thought he stood, the Jabberwock, with eyes of flame, came whiffling through the tuggly wood and burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through, the vorpal blade went snicker-snack. He left it dead, and with its head he went galumping back. And hast thou slain the Jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. O oh, frabjous day, kaloo kalay, he chortled in his joy. Twas brillig and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wabe, or mimsy were the borrow goves and the moam wraths outgrabe. And that's the story that the Cheshire cat told to Alice. Did you understand it? You understood everything? Yes. Anyway, the Bandersnatch, you've got to be careful of. You've got to be careful of the Jabberwock. Well, um, you have to be beware of the Jabberwock. You have to beware of the Jub Jub Bird. And you have to shun the frumious Bandersnatch. That's what he said. Anyway, Alice was very careful after that. And as she went through the forest, she saw many of these monsters until she came across the Queen of Hearts and her army of playing cards. Now, the Queen of Hearts was very, very angry because someone had stolen her tarts. Can you imagine that? And she was looking for who had stolen her, 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 her tarts. I wonder what sort of tarts they were. Do you think they were jam tarts? I do not. Well, she was looking for somebody with jam on her f his face. She looked at all the cards and she said to each card one by one, have you stolen my tarts? And one by one, the playing cards said, no, I didn't steal your tarts. Your, but then, she came to the knave, which is the Jack of Hearts, and she noticed that the Jack of Hearts had jam on his face. And she said, you're guilty. Off with his head. Because that's what the Queen would say, the Queen of Hearts. She says, off with his head, when she wants to get rid of somebody. Now, shall I tell you how that came about? The story about the tarts is like this. The Queen of Hearts, she made some tarts, all on a summer's day. The Knave of Hearts, he stole the tarts and took them clean away. The King of Hearts called for the tarts and beat the Knave full sore. The Knave of Hearts brought back the tarts and vowed he'd steal no more. So, the Knave of Hearts was dragged away by the Queen's soldiers to have his head chopped off. And then she looked at Alice, and she looked very cross with Alice, so she said to Alice, well, she didn't say to Alice, she looked at her and ordered, off with her head! So Alice ran away and did battle with the, um, with the Jabberwocky and beat the Jabberwocky. And then she followed the White Rabbit all the way back to the room where she'd come in, and she went back into the room and looked up the rabbit hole. She really didn't know how to get up the rabbit hole and how to get out. But then she had an idea. Uh -huh. She remembered the bottle, which said, drink me, and she thought, will that help me get up? No, that'll make me too small. And then she remembered the cake makes her bigger. And she thought, if I get bigger and bigger, I could go up and up and up and up until my, I'm, I can get my arms out of the rabbit hole and climb out. So she looked around and luckily there was a little bit of cake left and she ate it and she started to grow bigger and bigger and bigger and she went up the rabbit hole like that 
up, 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 until she could just reach out and she grabbed a branch and pulled herself out of the rabbit hole and lay down on the grass exhausted. She was so tired after her adventure, she fell asleep. A rabbit is on in a dream. Well, after a while, she woke up. She heard her sister calling her. Alice, where are you? And she, she woke up and said, oh, sister, I'm over here. And then she proceeded to tell her sister about what had happened. But her sister said, oh, Alice, you've been asleep for a long time. You were sleeping by the tree, by the rabbit hole. It was all a dream. And that's the end of the story of Alice in Wonderland. They didn't believe him. Well, there was something that Alice had in her pocket. She had in her pocket the white rabbit's watch. Ah? So how could she have the white rabbit's watch in her pocket if it didn't happen? Maybe it did happen. But how did it get there? How did it get there? I guess when she was at the Mad Hatter's tea party, she must have picked it up to repair it. And then put it in... And then put it in her pocket. When, and then she had to run away, didn't she? From Because she was being chased by a bandersnatch. Well, that's the end of the story. I have to fall down. Oh, I did fall down. Oh, well. I guess you like that story. I'm going to stop it now.